Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to install SQL Server 2016. Uh, SQL Server 2016 CTP is released, so you can go ahead and download SQL Server 2016 and install it and start learning. In this demo, we'll be going through prerequisites of SQL Server 2016. I have provided the link if you wanted to know more detail about the prerequisites of SQL Server 2016. A couple of them that I will mention right here. Uh, one is that uh, you cannot install SQL Server 2016, even the CTP on Windows 7. Um, that is a big change because you could um, install SQL Server 2014 on Windows 7. So at least you have to have, uh, right now for CTP, you have to have Windows 8 or 8.1 and above. So that is one big change as far as prerequisites goes. The second prerequisite is in order to support some new features that we will talk about when we select the new features during our installation is polybase feature right here. For polybase feature, if you select that to install, uh, it requires Java runtime environment. And this is the link that I have provided right here. Um, basically, um, you can click on the link and download uh, JRE. Uh, I did that already. Let me show you real quick. This, these are the prerequisites link that uh, that I have provided you can just click on go through the pre uh, hardware and software requirements they are liable to change since it's a CTP so um, um, I'm not sure that how much it would be changed when they will release the principal versions uh, this is the Java runtime environment what I did that I went to this link and I downloaded right here Windows 64 right here um, 64.exe so I have downloaded this already, but what we're going to do is in, uh, select that feature, and during our installation, if uh, this is not installed, if J JRE is not installed, it will give us the validation error. And uh, we're going to go through that, um, and uh, after that we will install, because I do wanted to cover that, how to install JRE as well. So once we install it, we'll revalidate it and see that if it'll let us pass through. So let's go ahead and um, mount our media. Right here is our SQL Server 2016 CTP version 2, 64 version right here. I'm going to go ahead and mount it. Right click and click mount. And we need to run the setup in administration mode. Run as administrator. Click on installation right here and click on new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation. Click next. It's installing some set of files right now. This is evaluation version as is the CTP right now. So let's go ahead and click next. Accept the license. I don't want to send the report to Microsoft, so I'm going to uncheck that. Click next. You get a couple options right here. SQL Server feature installation. If you select this option, you will have options to select the features, what you want to install and what you don't want to install during this installation. And we do want to select this uh, particular option because uh, in this uh, video, we're going to install SQL Server Engine and some management components. We're not going to install analysis services or reporting services or integration services in this uh, particular demo. Uh, but uh, we will put together uh, an, uh, a separate videos for each installation and configuration of analysis services, reporting services, and integration services. And other option we have right here is all features with defaults. So what it's going to do is it's going to not ask you to uh, select the features. It's going to select all the features and install it uh, during this installation. So let's go ahead and select SQL Server feature installation and click Next. Here it'll give us option that what we wanted to, uh, let me make it a little bigger. So here we can uh, uh, select the features what we want to install. In our case, we're, we're going to go ahead and do the database engine, SQL Server replication, uh, full text, and polybase. This is the new feature in our SQL Server. If you click on this feature, you will get a little bit description right here. What it does is it creates uh, the 
integration between transactional data, which is SQL Server, and non-transactional database, such as Hadoop, and you can use the same T-SQL statement in order to query the external data database, which is um, uh, which could be uh, non-transactional. In terms of um, um, non-transactional database, such as Hadoop, uh, you can use the same T-SQL statement again um, and uh, uh, query the data. This is huge. Um, I like this feature. I uh, can't wait to really play with it and see that how it uh, behaves so we're gonna go ahead and uh, select that and we're gonna uh, up here um, client tools connectivity some of the management components are already installed so I'm gonna go ahead and client tools backward compatibility SDK and that's about it and my instance root directory is C right here. You have an option if you wanted to install SQL Server somewhere else. So click Next. As you can see, the validation is failed. As I mentioned earlier, that Oracle G, uh, JRE7 update 50 one 64-bit or higher is required. This is uh, in order to support the Polybase new feature of SQL Server, you do require uh, GRE. So uh, this is what I mentioned earlier. Right here is the link that you can directly go to the link. And um, let me show you real quick again. Right here, it will t the link will take you right here. And um, if you're using, um, in my case, I downloaded um, JRE 8U45 right here for uh, Windows 64. I'm installing this on Windows 8 right now, 8.1, I'm sorry. So um, you can go ahead and download that. And let's go ahead, since I downloaded already, and install that. Let me go and find that. Right here is my G uh, JRE. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and run as administrator. I left the installation right where it is because we do have a validation failure. What we're going to do, we're going to install uh, uh, JRE and then we're going to revalidate, rerun the rules and see if it let us go through. So you can uh, change the destination folder for your JRE. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just accept the default, click install. It won't take long to install JRE. As you can see, you have successfully installed Java. So we're going to go ahead and close this and rerun our rule right here. As you can see that it let us go through now you have option either you wanted to go ahead and with default instance I'm gonna uh, basically create a named instance this is no different from SQL Server 2014 so I'm gonna go ahead and provide SQL 2016 that's my named instance and click next Notice right here, uh, MS SQL 13 uh, for SQL Server 2014, uh, what it used to say was that um, it's, uh, uh, MS SQL Server 12. So just, uh, just so that you know that uh, when you install SQL Server, if you have SQL Server 2012 already installed uh, or 2014 already installed, this is how you can basically, let me go back one more time, right here. This is how you can basically check that uh, this is your SQL Server 2016 installation. Um, I did put named instance SQL Server 2016, so I would know that, that this is my SQL Server 2014. But just in case if you don't, so um, right here you have uh, option to basically run these services under a service account, which is a best practice. You should have um, SQL Server agent uh, separate account, database agent separate account, and um, uh, that is the best practice but I'm going to go ahead and accept the default values for now just for the demo purposes so click next 
up here you have uh, authentication mode just just exactly like in sql server uh, 2012 2014 or previous versions um, i'm going to go ahead and select mixed mode if you just select windows authentication mode you cannot in uh, basically create sql server um, user you will always have to rely on your active directory which is windows authentication mode right here so I'm gonna give password right here. This is SA password. Make sure it is strong password. It is always a good idea to add current user and also if you are um, part of a team of uh, DBA, you can add basically your DBA uh, group right here and they will become sysadmin on this particular SQL server. So data directory right here option. You can if you have um, the uh, you have an option right here to change the uh, system directory or database directory or log directory. The best practices are that you should not keep your data files and log files on the same drive. Since this is demo, um, I only have C drive, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just basically rely on uh, default values. One thing I do wanted to mention that is changed in SQL Server and it's new, uh, tempdb directory. We have four cores. The maximum is eight number of uh, number of temp db files maximum maximum is eight but um if um, your sql if your computer whatever the server that you're installing sql server 2016 if it has number of uh, cores or cpus it basically uh, this is the default value for uh, it will pick the default value from your cpu uh, again it cannot be more than eight so um uh, it will create the four temp db data files for me as you can see right here so i did want to mention that this is very very important and it, it is just because the performance of sql server uh, 2016 so let's go ahead and click next if you wanted to enable the file streams you have an option right here to enable it we're not going to enable in this demo so let's go ahead and click data directory again take a look and click next here is the summary that what is going to uh, be installing and where it's going to install right here the directory and uh, up here the service account if you have used service account it will show you that uh, these are the service accounts and uh, administrator right here uh, in my case uh, this is just the administrator but uh, if you uh, add your uh, DBA team it'll appear right here this is just the summary you can all always look at the summary looking at below file right here so let's go ahead and click install Installation is going to take uh, some time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Once the installation is completed, I'll be back. If I run into any error, uh, I'll share with you. All right, as you can see that our installation is completed successfully. All the features that we selected are installed successfully. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, connect with our SQL Server 2016. I'm gonna open 2016 Management Studio. Right here is 2016 CTP SQL Server Management Studio. Run as administrator. We can go ahead and close this. First time when uh, SQL Server Management Studio is installed and fired up, it always take a little time to uh, basically start. All right, here's our uh, SQL Server 2016 instance. Let's go ahead and connect and take a look a little bit. As you can see that uh, if uh, you open databases, there are already three databases created, uh, DW configuration, diagnostics, and Q right here. This is, uh, uh, these databases belong to the new feature called Polybase, as we talked about a little bit, uh, uh, Polybase. So these three databases by default uh, gets created when you install SQL Server 2016. One thing I wanted to show you right here that if you go to the tempdb and see that uh, how many data files that tempdb has, it should be at least four um, 
tempdb data files so click on files as you can see right here one two three and four these are the data files of tempdb and one log file in previous versions there used to be only one which is right here temp dev that would be the data file of tempdb and one log file but here again it depends on your cpu and number of cores so maximum it can be eight it's a nice feature to have that um, you don't have to create the tempdb um, uh, data files later on it's it gets created with the installation which is great so this is what uh, i wanted to show you and uh, also these three databases that gets created when you select polybase um, and we will go through uh, different uh, settings in next coming videos and i hope this installation video helps